Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about five things that you should be doing before flying your first flight using the DJI Mavic Mini. I'm also going to be doing a future video where I fly the Mavic Mini as far as I can until I lose signal and then we're going to see what happens. So if you're interested in that and you want to see that, make sure to leave a like on this video, comment and subscribe uh, so that you don't miss out on that. Uh, with that being said, let's get right into the pre-flight checks. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've set up your drone, you've got it all ready to fly, you've connected the um, controller to the the phone whichever phone you've got i've got a pixel 2 um, once you've done that um, what you're going to want to do is click on the three dots at the top right hand corner of the screen uh, click on about and from the top you've got name then model then you've got aircraft firmware update um, this is going to be crucial so you're really going to want to do this before flying um, basically the update so if you click on check on update which I'll do now there shouldn't be anything because I have updated it all but when you click on that when you first get your drone um, it will pop up with some updates for you to complete um, these are really important because for example if we if we go on here we can see that I now have the ability to have full manual control over my drone just move that so if I click on the shutter and I'm shooting at 24 frames a second I'll then want to make sure I come down here and put that at double the um, and the closest I can really get to is 150th so yeah and then you can control your ISO as well so basically what this does is it means that you have full manual control over your video um, so the the exposure mid-flight isn't just going to randomly change um, automatically and it just looks a little bit more professional and really it's just a cool feature to have. So I would definitely recommend making sure you update your firmware. Next, um, check the FlySafe database as well, update that. Then if, you, if we move on over to a camera and we come on down to storage and format. So what you're gonna wanna format every time before you take off this prevents any kind of um, error or sort of data corruption on the memory card or anything like that. So make sure you clear your memory card and then you are ready to go. Once you've done that, if you come down to advanced shooting settings just here, there's a little tick box called um, the histogram. We want to see that because when we're in manual mode, if we come here, we can see uh, on the histogram, just on here on the screen, um, if the histogram is peaking at all you're losing any details in either the whites or the blacks um, the histogram is going to tell you that so if you can see that line there is touching the right hand side of the wall that means that we are losing a little bit maybe on the highlights um, so you might want to up the shutter speed and then bring that down um, and then everything basically then you'll know everything is properly exposed if it's too dark then that will all be all the way over to the left for example if I just increase my shutter speed um, all the way up you'll see that that curve just peaks right over to the left hand side of that histogram and if I put it all the way down we get it over to the right so that's just really a really useful tool for manual um, filming all right so once you've done the histogram the other thing you can use is the overexposure warning so if I click on that you can see here that I have got um, the zebra lines up in the top left hand corner of the screen so that, that means that the sky is being blown out, which is okay, but sometimes you don't want it to be blown out. So if I put the shutter up just a little bit, um, maybe depending on how much it's blown out, and the more you the more you go up, basically those zebra lines will, will leave, will go away, um, showing that it's no longer overexposed. But I mean, take that with a pinch of salt. Um, it doesn't really matter if the sky is overexposed. But yeah, it's there if you need it. I tend not really to use that one. You also have grid lines, but I don't really like flying with grid lines. Um, but yeah, if you want to turn those on, just flick them on here. You can choose between three different ones. Um, obviously the rule of thirds, the cross one, or just the, the dot in the middle. Um, but yeah, I actually prefer just having, having no grid lines. Um, but it's personal preference on that one. Um, Right, so after that, you can change the rest of the settings however you wish, but if you come out of there, 
um, and we go to controls you have three different flight modes so you've got cine smooth position and sport i wouldn't really worry about changing this right here right now and um, you can change that once you've taken off so it's not really a massive thing now the well here in the uk anyway the drone comes preset in meters um in the metric form so if you want to change that and you want to be an imperial so you want to see feet you can just click on imperial we'll come back here and then you can see um, I am 16 feet away from the drone. The drone is just down here. Um, and then when you take off and you go higher, it will be able to tell you how high how high it is going. So obviously you can only go to about 400 feet um, or 121 meters, I believe it is. Um, so yeah, that's very really useful. You can also have metric if you want kilometers and things like that. So the next thing is the gimbal mode. Now the gimbal, gimbal mode, I personally have on full mode. Um, because this is a little bit better for cinematic shooting. Uh, if you want a little bit more action style, fast paced, then I'd go for FPV mode. Um, and basically the, the camera will then stay with the drone as the drone turns uh, instead of being stabilized. So yeah, I would just stick that on follow me mode. Um, go to advanced gimbal settings. If we do the pitch, pitch speed and pitch smoothness, I actually like to have the pitch because for example, let's put the pitch speed up really high and we'll keep the pitch smoothness at five. Now, if you see that I changed this, the gimbal here, see how quickly it, it rotates? It's pretty, it's pretty fast, to be fair. Uh, if I bring that down now to around about 11, you can see that if I now pull down all the way on the little trigger here, um, it is going much slower. But that's actually really good for, again, nice smooth footage so i like to have it on quite a low setting uh, again personal preference on that one um right so the other thing is if we click on here and you can see that when you rotate the gimbal all the way up to the top it gets locked um, right here so if you want to actually rotate it up any further if you just allow upward gimbal rotation now we can actually look up as well so yeah some people don't like to have that flick um, on because you can see sometimes you can see the propellers in the shot so which is why I think they keep it locked as just um, preset to level uh, but you, you do have the ability to go uh, to, to look up if you want so I'm just going to turn that off um, so down here you have your oh the other the other thing before we've just skipped over that was the uh, gimbal calibration so you're going to want to make sure that you do your gimbal calibration before um, you, your first flight it will get you to do that anyway so I wouldn't really worry too much about that now over on safety this is where you have your max altitude um, and max distance now um, but what we're really looking at here is your auto return to home altitude now I've got it on 108 meters um, I don't actually need it that high right now but depending on where you are you'll want to change this so for example, I am at the moment in the uh, woodland with high, very tall trees. Uh, these, these trees are about 60 meters, about, around about. So if I set it to be around about 70, playing on the side of caution, um, basically what that will do is if I now press the return to home button on the control, which is just this one here, I press and hold that one, uh, and the drone is off miles in that direction, what it will do is it will raise itself to 72 meters before then attempting to fly back to home. Um, obviously that's advantageous because if I fly outside the uh, forest and down uh, and then I, I says return to home and it just flies straight back to me, it's just gonna fly into a load of trees. So it's, it, that is um, pretty important to make sure you set every time you fly your drone. Again, com um, compass calibration you can do here as well and an IMU. Um, calibration as well so that's all very important so just click on those calibrate it um, and the app will take you all right so I'm actually going to show you how to do the um, compass calibration because I do think that is very important and it can be a little bit confusing when it comes to actually which way you hold the drone and things like that so again if we go to the three little dots in the top right hand corner of the screen go to the safety tab and um, once you're there click on compass normal and just click calibrate It'll pop up with this little message that says keep clear of me uh, metal objects, um, any with an 
any objects with an electrical charge and ensure that the distance between the aircraft and the ground is around 1.5 meters. So I'm out here in the middle of the forest um, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna be all right for this, but with, with your case, just try your best to stay away from any metal objects or anything like that. Uh, once you've done that, just hit start and it's gonna pop up with rotate the aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. So to do this, we are gonna wanna Just put down the uh, put down the control phone so you can see it from there. Now we'll hold the control here, uh, hold the drone here like this, and just rotate 360 all the way around. So we're 1.5 meters off the ground. We've gone around, and we've got the green light on the back. Of the drone shows us that we've just completed the first the first one. So that's done. Uh, so we we'll look down at it, and they'll be telling us um, to ro rotate the aircraft 360 degrees but this time vertically. So to do that, we're gonna flip it so that the camera is facing up towards the sky um, and you can see the green light here. We're now gonna be rotating this 360 all the way around. And there we go. So that is now complete. If you look down um, to your phone screen, you'll be able to see that it has now just gone back and it's all done. You also have on here a find my drone feature, which is very useful to know if you lose your drone. Obviously, if you click on there, it will, it will take you to the maps and then it will show you where your drone is and how far away you are. You can also open that up into Google Maps and if you want directions there, you can get directions. So yeah, uh, that is a really cool feature. Now on advanced safety settings, you wanna make sure, you wanna come in here and make sure, I know that it's probably preset anyway, but you wanna come in here and make sure that you, on the signal loss, so if you're flying your drone, and, uh, and it loses signal between the drone and the controller, uh, the drone automatically takes control of the flight and returns to its home location. So I've got it set to that because it could, there's two other options, there's descend and there's hover, and you don't really want that if, uh, if your drone is miles, like literally a long way from you, you don't want it just descending into God knows what it could be descending into trees or a lake. Um, I think the best option there is for it to just return back to where you are. So I, I think that's quite important there. Um, yeah, um, so the other thing is to note, uh, when you start up your drone, uh, it should automatically set a home point, a return to home point. Um, if it does not do that, that, there is a way to actually set your, your home point. Uh, but you have to be in flight before you can do it. So it's just here under safety. If you tap on update home point, um, if I do it now, it will say use when aircraft is in flight. So if you take off and it hasn't set a home point and you, or you're not sure if it has, um, just open up the settings. So top right hand corner of the screen, um, safety and then update home point and then that will do that for you. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you today is how to take off the drone and the few different ways you can do that. So the first way I took off the drone was to press the, um, the little up arrow in the left-hand side of the screen, and then you simply just hold down on the takeoff button. Make sure your drone isn't like in long grass or anything like that. I'm actually using the little case that comes with the drone as a sort of a little landing pad there. Um, so yeah, I'm just waiting for that signal on the GPS to get better. There we go. So now you just hold down on takeoff until the green light goes all the way around the circle. As soon as you let go, it's gonna take off. So here we go. And it will automatically, you don't have to do anything, it will automatically go to around about 1.5 meters or so, one meter. Uh, and then from there on, you can um, fly your drone. So yeah, um, the other way, so in, when I'm in an environment like this, uh, the way I land it is I just bring the drone over to me um, and I pull down on the left-hand trigger all the way down. So pull the way down and I just catch it in my hand. Um, it's got sensors on the bottom, so when you put your hand underneath it will fly up. If you just hold it down, it will eventually come down to your hand. Um, right, so the other way to take off, I'll just quickly show you that. So the other way we can take off is by 
pulling the analog sticks out to the left or in or in in or out basically but if you pull them out like this the propellers down there you may be able to see them um, actually have now started so i can sort of rev the engine a little bit by just pulling up on that uh, and then if you push all the way up it takes off and there you go so that is how you do that as well Woo. So there you go, there's a couple of different ways that you can take off the drone and also a way of landing it as well. So that's pretty much it to be honest. Um, this this is the first drone I've ever had um, and I just remember basically taking it off. I literally got it out of the box, charged up the batteries, set it down, um, pressed the takeoff button and, I, and it was flying and I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of freaked out, managed to figure out how to land it and then I was like, okay, I need to now look at the set I really should have done that beforehand but, but yeah these are some of the things I think will make me feel a little bit more confident if I'd known them beforehand um, which I probably could have easily found out but yeah I was too excited to fly the drone so yeah um, these are a few things that I think might help um, yeah and if you want to see me fly my drone until I lose signal and see what happens um, yeah make sure, sure to subscribe that's pretty much all I've got for this video um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.